Hello and welcome to the channel. This is the first of three videos where I talk about the GIE Expo, the nation's largest lawn and garden show that was held October 20, 21, and 22, 2021. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of what goes on at the show and uh, we're going to focus on the inside give you some highlights of what I saw there. The show is huge. It's pretty much impossible to see everything that goes on in the two and a half days that it's running. There's over 1.2 million square feet of inside space and 22 acres of outside demo area. Like I said, it's huge. When I started going back in 1996, it was focused on the manufacturers and the equipment dealers. Today there are still a few parts suppliers, but the focus today is on equipment dealers, equipment operators or landscape contractors as you want to say, and there's almost no residential at all. Some of the companies like Spartan, Skag, and Aarons do show just about all their product line, but in general, uh, the show is focused on the landscape contractor. But that's okay. Um, you need to see what they're, what's coming for them because a lot of the technology is going to filter down to the residential as time goes on. I want to apologize that some of the video inside uh, is a little shaky. I just used a handheld camera inside. Outside, it'll look better. So, let's talk about what I saw. To begin, I want to show you four things that uh, caught my eye. Uh, the first is this Cub Cadet and it's labeled the Ultima ZTS-2. It looks like it's gonna replace the uh, old RZT line. I couldn't find anybody to talk to me about it, but uh, as you can see, it's got LED lights. Uh, everything looks nice on it. The seat sits nice and tall. Um, hopefully they're gonna get rid of that RZT line because I think that's the ugliest mower on the market right at the moment. But uh, Hopefully this will show up this spring. As most of you know, I prefer something that is not a lap bar. Um, the steering wheel models on the Cub Cadets are good. They're easy to use. You get better traction on slopes and all that type of stuff with them. Um, so I really can't wait to see if this is gonna show up this spring. Second, this has been around a while, but I like to point it out every year. The uh, Country Clipper is one of the older brands. Makes, they make really good machines. Uh, all of their ZTRs are flip-up decks. No, no extra charge for a flip-up deck. They also have some really nice features if you are uh, physically challenged. They have a bolt-on step for the front. They have a handlebar that can help you get on and off of the machine. The seats set nice and high, and they use a joystick control instead of lap bars, so they can operate it with one hand. One of the newer features about it is the joystick can be moved from the right side, the normal right side, to the left side, uh, the dealer is capable of doing that. So if you have problems using your right side, uh, the dealer can set it up so you can use it left hand. And let, let, did I say they're built really well? Uh, they've been around a long time and uh, they're well worth looking at. Number three, how would you like to have an Aaron's Icon XD52 painted in the original Aaron's colors. 
the uh, light light gray deck and original Aaron's logos. Uh, it's a special seat that's built just for it. Let me know what you think, if you'd like one or not. And number four, here's a prototype snowblade from Cartmate. I think they call it the Snowmate. Uh, it clamps onto the front of most uh, ZTRs and stand-ons. Uh, it's this was not a working model as such, but uh, I like the wings and I like how heavy it's built. I like the poly uh, top and the steel bottom of it. Yeah, they got a few things to do, to fix on it yet, but uh, I think I think it's something to keep in mind. One more honorable mention before I get into showing you just generalized pictures. Um, the last few years, uh, the trend has been bigger, badder, more horsepower, more expensive, heavier, rugged, all that type of stuff. So the commercial mowers, the price has just been going up and up and up on them. Well, Gravely has come out with a less expensive model of a stand on. The uh, new Z stance um, doesn't have all the features that their uh, pro stance does, but it is still a very capable mower. Uh, it's something that uh, I would be interested in as a homeowner. I don't have pricing on it yet, but uh, I'm sure it is a lot more reasonable than most of the stand-ons out there on the market right now. So. These new Gravely stand-ons remind me a lot of the original stand-ons that I used back in the mid-90s. They're lightweight, very easy to use, fast. But one thing I really like about these is all the features that I wanted back then are now on these new machines. And it would take me 20 minutes to tell you about all the features that I like about them. So if you have two, three, four acres or more, uh, these are definitely something to take a look at. You'll like the way they ride, the way you'll like the way they cut. And you'll like how good the Gravely is. All right, the big trend this year is electric. All the major players have, are coming out with uh, electric versions of their machines. Uh, mean Green and Greenworks have added models to them. Greenworks now has two or three residential models. Gravely has their commercial EV model, which is selling like hotcakes. As you can see in the picture here, DR Power is coming out with a suitcase battery that allows you to use it in a mower, snowblower, rototiller, and more to come. Um, there's a typical battery. Uh, this one's made by Briggs and Stratton. There's a lot of complexity to these because they all use the same uh, size cell. Different quality cells, but the same size cell. Thanks Briggs for uh, giving us a cutaway view of this so we can see exactly what's inside some of these batteries. <clears throat> Xmark has um, electrics, electric zero turns, electric stand-ons, uh, autonomous machines. Skag has a commercial electric and a residential electric ready to go. Uh, Hustler is showing their little small dash mower in an electric version and on and on it goes. Uh, when we get outside I'll show you some more of the the electrics in action. One major player that uh, I didn't see any electrics with was Cub Cadet. Uh, they were not showing their residential electric models in fact the only uh, and they had no battery powered uh, commercial set up to show. There were 
so many electrics this year that I'm sure that I missed uh, half a dozen of them because there are just that many. A uh, lot of newcomers in the market um, making autonomous vehicles. Uh, that seems to be the push right now. Uh, Husqvarna, of course, is doing, that's all they, they're, they're interested in right now is doing autonomous. Cub Cadet uh, doesn't have any electrics, but they do have a GPS equipped mower that will mow perfectly straight lines. So if you got a huge property and you like that striping effect, their new GPS is pretty, pretty interesting. Here are a few pictures of different vehicles. Uh, this is Toro's version of an autonomous mower. Um, it's just a prototype. It's not ready to go yet, but give you an idea what it looks like. Toro is going whole hog into uh, electrics. Um, here's a picture of their electric ZTR. And uh, probably the main reason why is California just passed this law where they need to, where no one will be able to use gas powered after 2025, uh, including the contractors. Uh, there's their stand on electric. Uh, they also are showing a version of the stand on with GPS so you can run it autonomously if you want. Uh, they had a lot of a lot of prototypes sitting around. They were letting you play with a uh, grandstand and the zero turn though out outside. Uh, here's another type of GPS autonomous. Uh, I didn't even bother to get the name. Uh, there's a lot of this type of stuff running around. Nomad, it's called. Okay. <clears throat> Toro is um, showing off all their new tools for the 60 volt line, uh, hedge trimmers, uh, cultivators. They have a split tool now, so you can run many different things off of it. Hedge trimmer, that type of stuff. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Here's more of the, here's more of the line. Um, you're starting to see a, a lot of uh, other manufacturers going this way, but uh, Toro has got a lot of it. And I'll just let this wander around a little bit here for you. The batteries were all dummy, so we couldn't uh, <laughs> we couldn't play with them inside. Uh, Toro Recycler, Toro 60 volt battery, Toro Super Recycler, Toro Commercial 60 volt. Uh, here's uh, the 26 inch, the 21 inch, and the 24 inch snow blowers. The uh, Two-stage snowblowers can use up to three batteries in them, and you've seen my uh, review of the demo. Hopefully we'll get a, another one of those this year. Uh, there's the regular mower, there's the recycler, and there's the super recycler. And the commercials. Like I said in the beginning, it's impossible to show you all of the stuff from the over 1,000 uh, vendors here at the show. I'll show you more outdoor stuff in the next video. You can see how we get to demo all this, a lot of the products. But as to wrap this up, you can find just about anything here from mowers for mowing steep slopes, like ski slopes, four-wheel drive, low center of gravity, utility tractors, skid steers, 
dump trailers, um, trucks, vans, landscape trailers, uh, you name it, it's here. Uh, quite a bit of, of heavy-duty snow equipment, snow blades, huge snow blowers, that type of stuff uh, for those guys that are doing uh, large contracted areas. Just almost nothing, though, for homeowner snow blowers in that like. To cabs for your ZTR and your UTV. To just about anything else that... Uh, you could want for your home, for your commercial operation or for your your larger properties even a dump cart that fits on the front end of your zero turn all right so that's it for this first one still got two more to go i will see you there thank you talk to you later bye